Some people may look at Ezekiel 18 and they may say, this is surely teaching salvation by works. Well, I didn't write Ezekiel chapter 18. God is the one that wrote or inspired Ezekiel to write the words in his chapter 18. But there are some parts of the New Testament that may be quite surprising to people. Millions of people accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God and as the Savior through whom we can be saved to eternal life. Millions believe that, accept that. But how many are studying the words of Christ? How, if you have a red letter New Testament Bible, the words of Christ are easy to be seen there. They're in red. How many people are studying what Jesus taught? Not what he just came to do by sacrificing himself and shedding his blood, but are people and are you studying what Jesus taught? Jesus went around preaching and teaching. He didn't just go around saying, I'm the Savior, I'm going to die for you, I'm going to shed my blood for you. He was teaching. He was talking about the Word of God. He was teaching the way to live. And some of the words of Christ are quite shocking if people are reading the words of Christ. Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Now, these were religious people at Jesus' time. And by reading the Gospels, you'll find out about them. They had a certain religious air to them. But Jesus is saying here to his true disciples, you better be more righteous than the scribes and Pharisees. Now, of course, as you read the Gospels, you find out that in many ways they were hypocrites. So a true Christian can't be a hypocrite. As we go over to chapter 7, in chapter 7 of Matthew, and in verse 13, Enter you into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Down to verse 21. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, uh, have we not prophesied in your name? and in your name have cast out demons, and in your name done wonderful works? Verse 23, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity, you that have been living the wrong way, you, and in the Greek it's really wickedness, you that work wickedness. You that work contrary to what is the will and the way of God the Father. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And then the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, but it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall thereof. Let's go over to Matthew, the 19th chapter. Picking it up in verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do 
that I may have eternal life. And he, Jesus, said unto him, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, if you will inherit eternal life, if you will enter into life, then keep the commandments. Verse 18. And he said unto him, that's the man saying to Jesus, Which? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the Ten Commandments that Jesus is referring to. The Ten Commandments of God the Father are a capsule of what is righteousness, what is the right way to live as far as God the Father is concerned and how he wants you to live. Those are the outline. The Bible then amplifies those Ten Commandments. As you read the Bible, you will find amplification for every single one of the Ten Commandments. Pretty plain words that Jesus said there. I didn't write them, friends. They've been there in the Bible since the first century AD. I didn't write them. They've been there all the time. Let's go over to Luke. Luke in the 13th chapter. There were present at the season some of the, uh, t they told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose you that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered those things? No, I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, do you think that they were sinners above all the men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Over to verse 22. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter into the straight gate, the straight, the narrow gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us and he shall answer and say unto them, I know you not where you are from. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and we have drunk in your presence. We've gone to your churches where you were worshipped. And you taught in our streets. We, we have been with you. We've been doing those religious things. Verse 27. But he shall say, I tell you, I don't know where you are from. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you workers of unrighteousness, you ones that have not gone the way that is God the Father's way. And he tells us what that way is by his word, by reading it. You read through the Gospels, the words of Christ, and some of them are quite shocking, as we have just read. Quite shocking. In studying the Bible, do you take the time to say, and I'll bring it up again, Strong's Concordance. This one is for the King James Bible, Strong's Exalted Concordance. Every word you can find here, and it will tell you all of the places it's used. So in studying the Bible, you can look in Strong's Concordance and study the word sin and find every single place where sin is used. You can find every place where abominations are used. You can find every place where wickedness is used. You can find all of those places in the Bible using 
such a tool as Strong's Concordance. You can find where repent and repentance is used, every single verse where they're used. You can find righteousness where it is used. You can find commandments. You can find law. And you can find every single place where those words are used in the Bible. And the beginning of salvation is to acknowledge what sin is, to acknowledge what wickedness is, to acknowledge what is an abomination to God the Father. And then it is turning away from that. It is repenting. So you can find all the places in the Bible by using strong concordance on repenting and repentance. And then it is repenting from those ways that God says are not my ways. And it is turning. It is being converted. It is moving from one mindset to another mindset. It's not working at those things to earn salvation. Look, you can keep perfectly the Ten Commandments, say, for a month. Right? You make a really big effort and you can keep the Ten Commandments for a month perfectly. You commit one sin and you come under the death penalty. And all of those commandments can't, can't nullify that death penalty. You can keep the speed limit a thousand times and you break it when the policeman pulls you over and says you were breaking the speed limit. He's not going to ask you how many times did you keep it in the past? Because if you kept it X number of times, we can nullify this time that you have not kept it. The policeman doesn't say that. He's just pulling you up for a time that you have neglected to keep that and you've broken the speed limit law. And it doesn't matter how many times in the past that you kept it perfectly. That one time of breaking it, he can give you a ticket and you have to pay the penalty. But it is changing your mind. When you become, you take Jesus as your savior and you start a new life. It is changing your attitude. It is changing your mind that you want to do the will of the Lord. You want to go his ways. You want to live as he wants you to live. It's a mindset. It's an attitude that you must have. And if you don't have that attitude, then you're not going to be doing the way of the Lord. If you think that you can just go out there and and sin willy-nilly and not come under the death penalty, you are mistaken. It's an attitude change. You, you must have a change of attitude that you are repenting of sin and you're saying, Father, I want to live your ways. I want to do your will and, and, and set your life in accordance. Read Romans chapter 6 and 7 of the Apostle Paul. He explains it all there. It's a mindset, it's an attitude that you must have in wanting to serve and obey the Lord in his way of life. If indeed you want to inherit salvation, you start to live the wrong way willy-nilly, just breaking the commandments, any one of them, just at will, you've got the wrong mindset and the wrong attitude and you'll be going down the wrong path. So it is indeed not a case of earning your salvation, but it is a case of changing your mindset and repenting of sin and wanting to walk in the way of the Lord. And that is part of getting you on the road that will lead eventually to you inheriting salvation. So that's why Jesus said when the young man came to him and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, you've got to have a mindset of keeping the commandments of God. If you don't have that mindset, you're going to be saying, Lord, Lord, we did this and we did that. And Jesus is going to say to you, I don't know you. Go away. I do not know where you have come from. It's a very serious thing, friends. Very serious thing indeed about the way of the Lord, about repentance and about living the way that God the Father wants you to live and having that mindset.